Okay, the, uh, these are called loose gauges. Now, they're called loose because after the brand name, uh, Loose & Co. Uh, these are available to buy at uh, your, your normal Whitworth stores or through most uh, marine chandleries. Um, prices, they're not cheap, uh, but you're talking a calibrated instrument here. So you've sort of got to weigh up the cost of whether or not you share it with some friends, maybe at the club, if you, you can't justify spending the uh, you know, 200 odd or 140 odd dollars on buying these, that you can actually maybe get the, a couple of members of the, the club to chip in 20 bucks each and share them. Um, it's not a device you use every day of the week, uh, but it's certainly something that you want to have easy access to. Now the usage of the loose, you've got two different types of loose. This is the uh, original Model A, and this is what they call the PT-1. You can see this is a, uh, as they get older, the spring aluminium actually begins to spring apart and they start to lose a little bit of their calibration. The PT-1 is actually a spring gauge. The hardening of this uh, spring doesn't tend to affect uh, the measurement and they give a lot more consistent measurement. The trouble is, and the reason why I still maintain two, is the scale when you get down to the lower end is much more accurate on the lever star scale than it is on the PT-1. These have a scale right down low on two and a half mil wire to five, which is pretty much a zero measurement on these, but they're very accurate at 10. These start at eight, and I've found that the eight is marginally accurate. Once you start getting up above the 13s, this is incredibly accurate. So you sort of trade off that very low end. Now, whichever gauge you use, maintain numbers for that gauge. If you need to change and use a different gauge, they're a different scale, so you'll need to have the different numbers to compare. Now the usage of these gauges is similar but slightly different. This one has got a groove in the back and a string. Now the string isn't just to hang it up on your wall, it's actually to use to pull out to the calibration point. Hook it over your four stay or your stay and you pull until the lever lines up on that black line. And you can see here you've got a measurement there that you can read off. So I would call that a measurement of 25. You can have a look at there and you can see that equates to about 120 kilo, uh, I think it's, yeah, kilograms of tension. Okay, which for a two and a half mil wire gives you plenty of uh, safety margin for the breakage. Now the PT-1, slightly different. You can, the good thing about this one is you can actually hook it on the spring out and hook it on like that and you can actually leave it there while you're actually adjusting your rig. Okay now the usage of the PT1 is slightly different you can actually leave it on the rig while you make your adjustments and it's important to make sure you line these up the correct direction you simply put it on and hook the top and read the number off the scale. The good thing is is you can actually leave that hooked on while you're making adjustments and you can see here the number at 25 is pretty close as the scale goes down, it will change dramatically to the lever type. So again, make sure you're using the correct numbers for the type of gauge that you're using.